Hello everybody and welcome to this first video on uh, economics. We're going to be taking a look at some of the basics of uh, economics and in particular macroeconomics in this very first video. Uh, we'll discuss some of the following issues about the study of macroeconomics. We'll be looking at what is economics and why is it important. Uh, I'll give you a brief review of microeconomics versus macroeconomics. Uh, we'll take a quick look also at what are economic theories and how economists use models to understand economic issues and debates. Uh, and lastly, a few words about some basic economic systems. So let's get started and we'll take a look first at, well, what is economics? Well, economics is the study of how humans make decisions in the face of scarcity. And you know that we all face scarcity day to day. These decisions about scarcity can be individual decisions. They can be uh, societal decisions. Uh, we are always faced with problems with scarcity and we need to, to solve these problems. We would like to all have a job, but we, we can't. Uh, we'd like to consume uh, as much as we want, but we can't. We have budgets. We'd like to have more leisure time and maybe more time to work, but we can't. They're limited uh, and we'd like to have more natural resources but again we can't because they're limited scarcity creates this important decision that must be made is you know how do we advance how do we do things what's interesting is that without scarcity there is also no value to something the more rare something is the more valuable it will be as well so uh, we know we can't satisfy all of our wants uh, we can't consume everything we want. Uh, we want to go beyond what is currently available, and this creates scarcity. And thus, this creates the, the need for the study and the, the, the science of economics. And economics is this study of how we make decisions in face of scarcity. Well, can't we just produce everything we need? Can't we say, hey, uh, I would like to consume something can i just you know produce it uh can we produce everything in our need individually can we produce everything we want to consume in our city in our country in our society uh today in modern ec uh, economies we rely on the production of other countries for example we do international trade i rely on other actors in the macro economy to supply me with what i need well I'm a pretty smart guy and I can probably learn how to do a lot of things. Uh, why don't I just learn how to cook all my meals? Why don't I just learn how to fix my car? Why don't I just learn to write my own books? Uh, why do that? Uh, we can learn many things, uh, but, and this is important, we may be better at specializing at certain things. Uh, and this is how and this is actually what happens in economies. We see people specializing uh, in certain things. So let's, let's take a look at that and, 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 and why this exists. This idea of specialization, the division and specialization of labor is linked back to the teachings of Adam Smith, uh, where he introduced this idea of dividing labor into discrete tasks in his famous 1776 book, the wealth of nations and and what he did is he studied the the manufacturing of pins okay so he he basically looked at well how is this done what's the best way to produce something to be as efficient as possible uh and he introduced the the concept of the division of labor and this is the way in which different workers divide tasks to produce a good or service well we see this division of labor day to day uh, in our daily lives. If we go into a restaurant, uh, we will see uh, numerous uh, people doing numerous tasks. We'll see chefs doing certain things. We'll see cooks in the back uh, uh, helping the chef out. We'll see the dishwashers. We'll see the front office, the serving staff. We'll see the hosting staff welcoming us uh, when we arrive. We see the cleaning staff. We see the bartenders. Now, Maybe in small restaurants, many people do many things, but we still see, even in smaller restaurants, specialization. So <clears throat> why do we specialize? Why do we divide tasks and specialize up? Well, Smith found that dividing up labor resulted in increased overall output. We were a, the, If we divide tasks up, 
And if we have one person waiting the tables and one person cooking, we were actually able to increase overall output and production of that restaurant, for example. So what are some potential reasons why this could be the case? Why is the division of labor a good way to produce? The first answer to that comes from the acts, uh, to, from the area of specialization. Uh, when we specialize, this is when obviously workers, employees, or firms focus on a particular task. Uh, some of us are better at doing things than others. Uh, we have what's called a comparative advantage. I'm not very good at drawing, okay? And uh, you may be very good at drawing, but I'm not. And so if you ask me to, to draw uh, or design something for you, I probably could not do it. I have certain knowledge, I have certain skills, I have certain uh, abilities that, that, that I have, but one of them is not drawing. Okay. The other reason we specialize, we can specialize, is because of resources. Some cities, some countries have resources at their disposal that other countries don't. And so you'll find countries that have certain resources, for example, oil producing countries, will specialize in oil production. They have the natural resource required. Uh, same is true if you go from one city to the next. Some cities have certain knowledge. For example, if you go to the Silicon Valley, we'll see uh, an increase of startups. Uh, we'll see maybe high tech. Why? Because they've, they have certain resources, in this case, knowledge and people that allows them to specialize. So specialization is one of the reasons why we divide up tasks because, well, we're just better at certain things than other people. The second reason is we divide tasks because this allows us to learn. If I'm doing something over and over and over, as I specialize, I become more efficient and more effective at what I'm doing. Uh, businesses focus on their core competencies. Uh, Airbus, Boeing have specializations, have certain things that they do over and get better and better at. They can learn through this. And as you learn, uh, the more you produce over time, uh, the better your learning becomes, and hopefully your costs of production decrease. <clears throat> and so uh, Boeing, for example, produces the airframe, the wing. This is something that's very, very specific, uh, and they've become very good at producing it. They don't produce everything in the airplane. They, they, they outsource a lot of things, but certain things they do, and they become better at it. Specialization also allows businesses to take advantage of what's called economies of scale. So scale economies are, are basically saying that as, uh, let me take my, my pen here for you, uh, as the uh, quantity we produce of something increases. So if I, if I look at the quantity we produce, uh, uh, quantity here, and this is my cost per unit. So per unit uh, cost, for example, uh, per unit cost. Scale economies basically says that as I produce more and more and more, my cost per unit to produce will decrease. Now, there's a limit to this. We know that as we produce more, as we extend out a little bit more, we're probably going to see the cost per unit start to go back up. And, and the reason why this exists, the reason why we have this uh, non-economies of scale, this is what's called economies of scale. We have increasing returns to production. Our costs per unit are decreasing. Well, <clears throat> this will actually happen uh, because uh, maybe we're doing too much of something. At some point, if you're telling me to do and to specialize in one task, at one point I'm going to get really bored of doing the same thing and I want some variety maybe and so my motivation can decrease. This is one reason why at some point my cost per unit can increase. But we know early on that there are economies of scale. The more we produce, the lower the unit cost, the cost per unit of production. And this is why, again, we divide, we specialize, and we do a lot of one thing because we can reduce our cost per unit. 